Wow, alrighty then. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then. This is for Terry. Terry, hope you're out there. I can't let you drink alone. All right. Went for Terry. Terry. This is a flathead Ford. We're just improving. Um, this is. We're not going to be doing any live streaming. Anybody who should use a rag to wipe your face um, for about three weeks because uh, Faye's going to be traveling. A lot of good things, exciting things happening. So and the virus going on. And everything else for about three weeks going to be on lockdown. So we're going to be even more locked down than normal. I'm not even going to clean myself. Um, how you doing, Ted? Um, so I just came on because I'm so used to about right about this time um, having a live stream. But really, I'm just here for Terry. I'm just here for Terry, TR, my, my, my brother-in-law. And um, he's in Germany, and I can't let him drink alone. And Terry provided these badass glasses. They're hard to see, and I almost want to get a marker and mark them just so you can see how badass etched glasses. And it says, Peace and Assembly Grease, uh, Vintage. Um, Friday happy hour 2020 and it's not broken and it is Friday the 13th and it is and I am at working I am at working does that make sense and is this my first beer what are y'all drinking out there Pachanga Friday Terry just for you Terry all I need one person to drink with and I'd rather it be no one else than you um, I would just explain this nice chilled mug I've been waiting for you to come on to pour something in it um, shop mom says uh, don't drink and work um, so we're not going to um, I am working. Um, I want to let you drink alone. Thank you. I'm just, that's what I was kind of, the whole thing bummed me out that we're not going to be live streaming for three weeks and no, oh, that was cool. I can use the break and all that. What's bumming me out is, uh, how are you doing? Good afternoon. Jody. Bumming me out is like, what about Terry? What are you going to do with, you know, I even told her, let's go home and just live stream back and forth with that zoom or whatever, but you're here now. And, um, this is, um, we've been balancing this thing for an engine for an engine for a week. I haven't had a beer yet, so let me have some beer. Cheers, Bachanga Terry. Oh, God. I don't know how much I've missed that. Wow. All right. Man. Elaine says we're done. Done, done. Hello and cheers. Um, don't drink at work, but you can... Don't drink at work, but you can work and drink. There you go. Um, I've been watching your videos, learning a lot how to mock up a Jessel belt drive. Yes, I got to finish that. We've been so busy that some, you know, we got to actually do work around here. So, anyway, anywho, I may just sit here and drink a beer with Cherry for 30, 45 minutes or something, and then we may just shut it down. I want to spin this up again. We've, I've been working on this all week. If y'all been following the balancing of a flathead, Trust me, it's way better balanced than what do you, what you think about it is. And I'm going to turn it on right now. We're going to show you. And I think I'm going to tweak on it a little bit more because it's Friday and we don't have any place to go. Actually, we can go home and I got videos to edit for Tuesday's drop, but that doesn't matter. Um, alrighty then. I don't think we even have to answer any questions. We're just going to have a Pachanga. I should have just called it that. Pachanga Friday. We may just end up just calling Pachanga Friday. All right. What's everybody else out there drinking? Or where are you from? Or I don't know. You want to see me spin this crank? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, Charles Whitman. I'm uh, I'm drinking. What do you invent? Oh, it's way too small for my eyes to read, but uh, uh, but you're drinking something. All right. I can't remember how much I've missed just the cold beer. Mm. Right on the outside of Wimberley, you're, oh, hometown, you're not, you know, in, in Texas, that's, 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 you're my, you're my neighbor, you're my neighbor, uh, have Mondello, there you go, um, spin the crank, all I need is one, I always tell everybody, all I need is one person to go with me, I'm going, um, hopefully she'll have some of the other ones, so that she'll come over and tell me if there's something that, that I'm missing, um, so show us your balance machine, there you go, so, what have we done? If you remember in the last, it was last Friday, I believe, this thing was shaking off the machine. I mean, it was pretty bad. So I've been working on it. Um, can y'all see from afar um, all the holes that are here? And it's not like cheese. I can show you a flathead for the way the Ford did it, and it's totally different. You almost need to be like right here um, to see all the, the, 
the 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 good stuff you need to be over there so come on come on follow me come on follow me over here you're gonna be in the shop you might as well get over here and get over here where you can see something hopefully the camera won't fall and hopefully you don't mind the shaking that's not me that's not me it wasn't me all right my tripod's messed up so i'm gonna leave that alone it seems like it's sitting put moving a little bit but let's leave it alone all right i'm getting closer that's a little better okay so over here's my rpm over here is the balance it looks on the screen like you might not be able to Ooh, i saw that for a second i did something there you whatever i did to the to the shadow really made a big difference i don't know what i did but every once in a while it, it just go back excuse me yeah, you can see. Anyway, damn it. I'm going to have a heck of a time today, aren't I? I'm going to have a heck of a time today. There you go. So, uh, this is my balance RPM. We've determined the balance RPM. Like I said, we can go to the class on how to do Stuart Warner's, and there's some knobs under here. I can even lift it up, maybe. Um, and we're not going to get into all the specifics of the, of the machine itself, but that's what you're looking at. This is the balance RPM. This particular engine wants to be balanced at 5,000, so we're gonna hit the, that's our number we're gonna hit is 5,000. Over here is the unbalanced. Um, over here is zero, over here is 10. If the unbalanced gets over here to the 10 scale, to the 10 scale, then we actually have to go to the next not so sensitive scale. So generally we start from here, if it shakes really bad and we keep on balancing, and then we go to here. Now we're at the finest. This is the most uh, finest sensitivity scale. So. Two and under over here on this dial over here is considered a race engine balance. Three or four is considered a street motor. I'm over here hugging zero. Um, I, wanna, I want it spinning and the needle to be right about there. Impossible unless you live in Mars or on space where there, you know, you, you know you can only make a ball bearing in space. Did you know that? Oh, man, I'm dirty. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and spin this son of a biscuits. Um, I'm spinning the wrong thing, aren't I? Okay, now you know what you're looking at over here. What are you looking at over here? Can you see that white light? And I think um, we addressed this last week on the camera with the 60 megahertz, whatever, it does show up, which is good. Uh, sometimes on a, on a camera, depending on the speed of the, of the um, I don't know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, we have 60 megahertz of the light and blah, 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 blah. You might not see the strobe, but I think Shot Mom said last week you do. Do you notice something every time I touch the crank? Anybody see that? See how sensitive this is? Even if there was air blowing across here from a fan blowing in the room, that what I'm doing right now, I have it set on my left side. The left side would be the harmonic balancer side. So I was actually sending harmonics down from this side. When I'm checking the sensitivity on the left side, we lock this side in. This side gets locked in. Why do we wanna lock one side in? If one side is off a lot, it can throw off another side. So until we get it even close to balance, we lock one side and we work only on one side. After that, we lock that side and we work on this side. Once we got both sides really, really close, now we can unlock both of them. You don't want to unlock both of them when this thing is moving around. Boy, reminds me of a John Wayne movie. Anyway, as you can tell on this side, when I touch it, look at the strobe light. And look how long it goes. I touched it, my hands are gone. You see that? Talk about some sensitivity. Why? Because that's unlocked. So it's extremely sensitive. By unlocked, I mean under here. I don't want to go to, we'll do a video on, on how to use a Stuart Warner machine or something, but I don't know. And I've only had just a couple of sips of beer, so this isn't a beer-induced uh, balancing job. Don't get me there. Um, okay. Ben, uh, Rancho Deluxe, uh, Johnson City, the best uh, flathead one of the best guys out there. This is yours. I've been working on it for two weeks. Uh, not to worry. If it was about making money, we, we don't have the right business plan. If it's about making the best that there is, that's our business plan. That's our business model. Why isn't my adjuster down? Come on, guys. Somebody should have caught this. While this is riding, 
especially if it's out of balance, there's a chance that this can fly off the machine that way or this way. Um, you can see it's pretty good because it ain't flying either way without a stop. All this is is a nylon stop with the groove in it. We have the, the thrust bearing here. So it goes down and all it does is keeps the crank from walking one way or another. It's a safety feature. If it's not balanced, it'll start moving everywhere. Um, you can tell we spun it up and it stayed put, but alrighty then. Let's get to it. People want to see some balancing. We're on the left side, which is the harmonic balancer side. We're going to take this up to 5,000 RPMs. We're getting there. We're at 5,000 on the scale now. I don't want to say you can trust me, but for the ones that don't trust me yet, you see that? There you go, 5,000. I'm not making this shit up. Ship up. What do we see on the strobe line? It's starting to move now. Can you see that? When it's out of balance, it's going to sit there and point one spot. Once you start getting closer and closer, it starts to move on you because it's so close to balance that it really can't pick it up. When we get to the certain point of awesomeness, this line will just start moving anywhere or it just won't even strobe at all. There won't be a light coming from here at all because there's no vibration. Right now, what are we strobing at? This is the nine o'clock. 12 o'clock, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock. You all know o'clock. We don't need to teach you clock. So we're at nine, eight, eight and a half right right hand side i'm going to set my dial to location is eight oh i'm on the left hand side don't go all right on me on oh, left hand side eight and a half there we are how much are we out of balance can you see that where was i there you go that's zero papas that's zero i'm a two lines out of zero it was balanced at two, the number two. I'm two tenths of one line. I mean, it is extremely balanced. But while I'm here, why don't we just make this thing just space age, NASA quality. So, it's perfectly smooth. Don't put your hands by the balancer. It's perfectly smooth. It is just, just listen. I think I'm just hearing the electric motor. I think it's pretty cool. All right, let's go to the right side. I've locked in my left side, and now I've dropped over my right side. There we go. We're going to take it up to 5,000 RPMs. You see that? I don't know. There you go. What does that say? I know you can, and I encourage you to stop it, slow motion, whatever. That's 5,000 RPMs. What do we see over here? I encourage you to do that too. That's right, Papas. That's numbers. That's a zero there. And we're under one. It is so machine smooth. Um, but while we're at it, let's make it smoother. Where's our light strobing? Can anybody give me a... What would you guess that to be? 12 o'clock being here. 6 o'clock being there. I'm going to call that a three and a half. It's about 3.30. It's about three and a half. There's our three right here. There's our six. There's our four. It's strobing right around, what, three and a half? All righty. Location. Location, three and a half. And where we're at, we're, man, we're under one. We're under one. Um, man, you turn some knobs. Okay, all right. We're done. Yes, so. I'm just watching you from back here. It's, oh. a it's a different view than what everybody else gets. Oh, really you can get the back view, huh? I all righty then all right so we're pretty much um in 90 percent of the shops if not in 80 percent if not in more than that this is balanced there's you you don't get you don't get better than this well i'm a, that's not true i'm going to show you how we're going to get better than this i've been working on it for two weeks i could have let this go a week ago but why I like to make a flathead balance like an LS motor. I like to take the mentality of an LS and put it into a flathead. Man, you get such a smooth flathead, you just don't even know. All right, so, shop mom said I can just hang out and drink and just be with Terry this, this evening, so um, 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to move you all over here so because you all don't have your safety glasses on. And while I have a beer, um, I'm going to just show you how I'm going to. You're going, well, I'm not showing you nothing but my beard. Um, she's not been feeling good, and now she's feeling better, but Texas is really crazy right now. Um, we're close to Blanco, uh, closer to Blanco than San Antonio. Blanco shut down. There ain't nothing happening in Blanco but an infected Blanco town. And they're closer to us than ever. We've actually closed the front. We've been, you know, closed and slightly, we start leaning a little bit to, you know, no, no. We just discussed it earlier today. We're more locked down than we've been for a while. Uh, we already got enough work for next year, so we're done. Uh, if you ain't got something in here right now, don't, don't call because it doesn't make a difference. It's by appointment only now. By appointment only, um, all our customers don't freak out. You've been with us for years and years and years and years. I ain't cutting. I ain't cutting y'all y'all off the thing. So y'all always have an open door. But uh, as for new customers, we're not taking any new customers right now. Um, then we use a tech commenter to check our sin of you to spit blood. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I've been I've been wearing this puppy out. Um, this is really, truly my mentality. This is not just a fun thing. Hey, have I ever come on here and sold you anything? A t-shirt with my name on it, a button. Have I shown you anything? So it's not that, uh, uh, um, it's not, that's not what this is about. This is true. This is my mentality. This is it. This is the, the, the way that, that, that I really, I'm going a little, a little too long on that, but I keep, I wear it every day, proudly. Um, uh, Faye would be real proud today. We we passed out. I uh, actually had a customer who is a uh, a long, long time caller, first time viewer. Um, no, I'm just joking. I keep on losing that. But um, we did we did a motor for him, and he he watches the live streams, and he's an assembler himself. So he's been watching the the how to file end gaps and all, all of the, all of the things, and, and we we basically did like a model for him. Um, everything is done. Everything is mic'd. Everything is blueprinted. The board is honed. Everything. He's gonna assemble it. But we've even gone to the to the to the um, expense for for him, but for the thing is of checking everything. So he doesn't. He can just truly just. Put it together like a model. If he assembles it correctly, there ain't gonna be no problem with clearances. We've we set all the clearances up, and um, he he actually goes. He actually said, uh, "I'm I'm in training." He told me he goes, "I've been watching your videos. Um, I'm, I've been I've been, I'm, I'm in training, and I and I and I love that idea that you have about in training." I said, uh, um, "I guess you need an I'm in training button," and he's he lit up. I went in there and Faye had some 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 buttons made that we've been you know handing out and. He, he's like, really? Can I, can I, am I now a student? And so uh, um, I handed it to him and his buddy. Uh, uh, um, his buddy was like, and I don't get one? And um, it wasn't just, uh, let me make Danny feel good and let me take his button and he's handing out. I never asked him, would you like a button? He actually pointed at my button that I'm wearing and said, I'm in training too, and went through the whole story about how he's watching the videos. That being said, I don't know how I got to that, but I, I, that made my day. That made my day. Um, I spent, um, which I'm going to tell you, I spent an hour and a half on the counter with him uh, going over all kinds of questions because that's what we do. Oh, as much as diesel motors vibrate, it is possible to balance in the blueprint them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The vibration of the diesel motor, actually, it's, it's, it's the cylinder pressure uh, um, compressing the diesel and reacting and, and doing a compression ignition engine. So, but... Uh, look at technology. They got diesels now. They don't vibrate at all. You can't tell. Uh, there's no smell, no smoke, no nothing. Um, our metal groove. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Farmer Grows the Chicken. And since it kind of is not necessarily, I'm not doing happy hour. We're waiting for Faye gets back. I, I didn't think it was right. It, it, not only I think it's right. We ain't copying something that, that we have with Shop Mom, Faye, us. We have this thing. It just worked out. We, we just, we have, we have fun. And that's genuinely real. So we're not going to try to to keep that at a guest to come in while Faye's not here. No, no. When Faye's not here, there's no, there is no happy hour. Um, that's what we do, and that's what we do. So this isn't a uh, trying to make up for that. This is for Terry and me. I'm gonna just get right down to it. There's two things and reasons why this is on. Terry and me. If not, I'd be drinking at home, and I'd probably put Terry on the phone. But y'all are here, and that's awesome. So I don't encourage you to. I don't never encourage anybody to do drinking work. We're off hours. This is it. This is like I said. This is perfection now, and 
I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. It's been a long week. It's been a long week. And y'all probably know it too. Everybody's all got all kinds of different vibes going on. Don't let that get to you. Don't let that get to you. Uh, yes, ma'am. You want to come here? No. Do you want to get a kiss? You know how I feel about that. You want to get a kiss off camera? No. I didn't even get a kiss off camera. Oh, you can have a kiss off camera. Um, there's a question about cranks. Somebody has a specific question about cranks, and I, I don't think you've seen it. Hmm, I can answer a crank question. Okay, well, I'm back there, and I don't have a microphone to tell you what it is, and I don't have... Oh, so I got to look for it? Don't touch that phone. Because it shakes real bad, and I'm going to do it? I guess you're going to have to. I'm going to have to. It, Let's it, see. It's... A crank question that Shop Mom wants me to address, but she's in a different room. She's in the other part of the shop. Awesome. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Um, was it? Tori, you told me not to touch the phone, and here I am touching the phone. Um, what do you think about? How can I get into injury building? That's a real good question. I'm, I'm, I'm all bored answering that one. If I don't find the crank one, we're going to... Knifefish cranks. Oh, oh, is that the one about knifefish yes. cranks? Yes. Okay, we can answer that. Uh, um, what do you think about knife fish cranks? Awesome until you get your hands cut. I'm just joking. Not again. Um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> People don't know who knife fish cranks is, so they'll be going, oh my God, they're going to cut this up. Uh, um, awesome. Um, uh, people don't realize that this is the best example that I can do about a knife fish crank and it'll sip for you and you're going to go, people have, have told me a lot of times, I go all over the place. They right. like the way I, I explain stuff because it, 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 it makes sense. Okay. The next time you're in a swimming pool, Put your hand flat and just hit it as hard as you can on the water. And then when people go, why are you screaming and crying? Because your hand's all red. You're going to go, because Danny told me to hit my hands flat on water. After that, put your hand like a knife edge and then hit it as hard as you can on the water. And watch out for your cojones or your legs because it's going to go right to the water. So is that a good example? Knife edge crank, your hand going through the water, flat, knife edge crank. If it hurts your hand hitting the water, think of what you're hurting your crank. Think of that. All right. You want me to turn off the spray washer? Um, is it off, off, off? No, uh, but I can turn it off because okay. you're doing this. All right. I know better. All righty. So that's nine fish cranks is bad. Like I said, once I, I give everybody the example of cutting your hand through water, done. The, we don't need to discuss numbers because they didn't go to college. There ain't going to be no numbers discussion. The physical... Slapping your hand on the water flat or slapping it sideways, you just think, oh, my God, what is that doing? And every time the crank's coming up and, and splashing that oil, that's why you don't want to overfill your oil level. Better than underfilling it. But great, great question. Um, how do you get into this business? It's unfortunate that there's not um, a lot of uh, mom and pop shops that you can go with sweet floors and get into this business. Um, want. That's how you get into this business. You want to be in this business. You got to want it. No one's going to give you anything. No one's going to open the door for you. A, the most most of the places you go and work for aren't going to teach you anything. They're going to want you to get to work and get to doing something. I'm not har har harping on that. But uh, um, hang in with my videos. Um, I will lead you right to the thing. You, But you got to want it. And man... Um, the door is open for you. There's not enough wanters out there. There's a bunch of, a bunch of, there's a bunch of wishers out there. Uh, um, there's not a lot of wanters, but a bunch of wishers. So the door will be open for you like you would not believe. One person in a 200-mile-an-hour radius that, that knows what he's doing, you, you know, uh, don't be... Don't be uh, uh, scared or that there's 18 shops in, in, my, in my neighborhood. Are there 18 good shops? There's a lot of shops in San Antonio. There's a lot of shops in San Antonio. Uh, um, you know, people ship us motors from all over the place. There's a lot of shops all over the place. So don't let that be a, a hindrance. If you want to get into it, you got to want it. Start off uh, um, with the Briggs and Stratton, two and a half horse Briggs and Stratton. You know, go get your little little Briggs, uh, little Briggs motor. It can be a clone. It can be a Honda. It can be a, a, a China one. Go to Harbor Freight, 99 bucks. Get your brand new one and start off with that. But... You don't need to. You get a little. You can get a weed eater from the scrap guy. Don't cost you a nickel. You will probably pay five dollars for it. Um, and start working on a Briggs. It's an internal combustion engine. It's eight. Uh, Briggs is makes up one flathead. Um, not even joking. If you think I'm, you know, it is kind of a funny joke. But if you look at a flathead Ford, it's eight Briggs connected by a common crankshaft. So if you can take apart the Briggs and Stratton, put it back together and get it running. Uh, 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 yes, it's 14 horsepower Briggs. 
even better. So uh, I encourage you, if you want to get into this, A, don't be scared. Get in there, take one apart, put it back together again, take it apart, put it back together, and get it to run. Um, now you're just getting into the internal combustion engine, which you're going to have to know you don't have to. That's the problem is that you... I think that you, that you shouldn't be doing machine work unless you know internal combustion engines. But um, automotive machine work is totally different than a machine shop work and any, anything else. Um, I know a lot of guys that that change over to automotive machine work, went into the military first and learned machining. Uh, um, get you a caliper, get you a mic, start micing everything. Get you a little mic, buy a mic on eBay, buy a mic, go to the, the, the uh, pawn shops. There's a lot of mics at pawn shops. Um, I don't want to say they're always getting stolen and sent to pawn shops, but but people die and their family doesn't know what to do with them and they take their mics over to the pawn shop. Anyway, get you a mic and just start micing things. Um, you need to get to the feel of a micrometer in your hand. Um, all the new schools right now are CNC'd. You go to a school and you learn how to set up a CNC machine. If you want to go learn how to set up a CNC machine, you're not a machinist. You're, uh, uh, you load and unload parts on a machine. Uh, um, so... You need to learn how the feel of a micrometer. Um, why? It's very important because you start getting the essence of what you're doing. If you learn the feel of a micrometer, one example, you can take a part, any part you have laying around the house, a little piece of block of aluminum, a block of steel, a, a bolt or whatever, and mic it, and then warm it up and remic it. And you're gonna go, it changed. See what I'm saying? When you start getting to the essence of what you're doing and you realize that different temperatures change your machining processes. So uh, um, you can't even get into machining if you don't have the essence of knowing metal will expand when it gets hot. Uh, um, how about Wolf A is taking off some Yes. Th th thank you, Terry, for answering the questions. Uh, um, so if you don't have, if you don't understand that as metal heats up, it expands, you're going to have a struggle of a time. If you get these, these, these processes down in your head and you just know them, well, you know, guess what? If I'm boring a block, I got a boring machine and I'm boring a block and I have a dull cutter, as it's boring, it's going to get hotter because it's dull and it's not cutting as much as it's ripping. As I start boring and I'm boring a six inch cylinder down, what's going to happen to the cylinder as it goes down to the bottom? Entry level guy, even older guys that are, I set them, look, look, I set the mic up right. I set the mic up right. Well, if the bit is dull and taper, Ted, you, thank you. There, as it's going down, it's getting hotter. It's going down, it's getting hotter. The bit's going to expand. You set it to the number, you hit the number. Well, dude, you couldn't tell because you couldn't listen that that thing is struggling. You couldn't see the smoke bellowing off the boring bar because the bit's burnt. So that's why the simple things that you can learn right now, you need to learn the essence of what you're doing will take you everywhere. You learn the essence of this and everything you do, you're not going to unlearn something. And you'll know as you're cutting something and you're doing it, if it's getting hot, keep it cool, all right? If it's getting hot, the bit's getting dull. To me, you can't be a machinist unless you can sharpen a bit. Uh, um, I grew up in a machine shop that we, the, the quick way boring bar is a carbide bit that you actually have angles that you got to sharpen a set. So if you start me messing with the, the cutting bit not being, if it's too wide, it'll get too hot too fast and bore off. If it's too narrow, it'll start cutting faster, but it won't last as long. So there's a certain width on the bit. Um, and it depends on how much you like to give that boring bar. Do you like to crank it up and give it 30,000 a cut or 10,000 a cut? All that has to do with the feel of the hand, the listening, the smell. I can bore anything on anybody's machine. I'll do a couple of test hits and see how their machine is boring. I'll, I'll hit the number I want, but I'm compensating. Anyway, sorry to go there all about how to get in the machine world. I love for people to get in the machine world. There's not enough real machinists. And um, pick up a mic, pick up something, start. You need to start getting the essence of what you're doing. Everything is, is revolved around what you're doing. Um, you need a machine. Like, if there's not one like you, become one. I, I, I don't want to say that, you know, I thought everybody, Ben, we need more machinists. We need more people to start going out there and doing real machine work. Um, a machinist can, I'm going to give you an example. A fr friend of mine is from Germany. He's uh, um, Maurice um, Hernandez, born in Seguin, Texas, local Texas guy. His mom, Maurice, 
if you're going to watch one of my videos, you watch my videos all the time, so hope you don't mind. Um, my mom and dad got divorced when he was a baby, for a few months. His mom is German. His dad is Hispanic from, from Seguin. Uh, his mom says, I'm going to go home and take him to meet his family. The family meet him. He never comes back. So he grows up in G Germany all through high school until he's out of high school. And then he wants to come back and, uh, and meet his dad before his dad passes and stuff. He, he came back to the States, but he's German in every essence. He sounds German. He talks German. He's precision like German. He's just German in every essence with the last name of Hernandez, and he's six foot tall. So when he went in to his, to his family reunion, he didn't understand any of them. They didn't understand him. And, and he's a, a big Hispanic guy, but he's, he's German in his, in his essence because that's where he was born. Only reason I'm getting to that, in Germany, the machinist schools there, they train you younger, and here's an example he told me. They get you a block, and they get you a file, and you got a vice, and there's a room full of kids, and they give you a drawing, and you take a file, and you file that block. So you have to learn how to use a file, how to go crisscross, how to not have waves, okay? When you think you're done and you're there filing a block, and you're getting all the cubes, they come with a micrometer, and, they, and all you have is a caliper. And they give you the drawing. They come with a micrometer, and they mic your block. Keep going. And you'll be there for a year in this apprentice class filing a block of metal till you get this perfect cube. And it mics perfectly, just like you did it on a CNC machine. He says I mean, they check you for roundness on the edge of the corners, everything with a file. Boom. You made it out of apprentice class. And you get to go to the next level. You get to the next level and they go, okay, and they give you another drawing. And you take this beautiful block, this precision, or you wouldn't have made it to the next level. And you're making it to another size. Now, how long is it going to take you? First, it can take you a year. He said about two years, that's when they go, you're not an apprentice. You're, you're going to go to cooking or something else. Uh, um, so the first part wasn't how long it takes you. It's how... Can you hit those? Can you make it a perfect cube with the drawing? Now the second one, you're going a little bit smaller, and let's see how fast it takes you for the second attempt. Going on. So, point being, a machinist is handed a file and a caliper. I think it's amazing. I just think it's just uh, it's teaching you everything. Heat. It's teaching you crisscross. It's teaching you with a file. You can make a perfectly flat surface if you crisscross a file. So. The only reason I told that story is because a good machinist with the two or three machines can do everything. A lathe and a mill can do everything he needs because uh, um, he can run, a, he can use a machine. Uh, the machinists we have these days are machine operators. Not, I'm not going down to machine operators. I mean, that just sounded a little weird. No, anyway, here's your fail on the trailer. What, what, what? You're trying to read, huh? I'm trying to read. I'll go back to work. Guys. That's okay. No, no, no. That's oh, fine. Okay. I just have a question. Come here. Come yes. Come. Excuse me, y'all. There's this awkward pause while Danny leaves the room. And you know my reticence to be on camera, so I can't stand in front of it and entertain you guys. I feel terrible. No, I don't feel terrible about that. I'm not guilt ridden at all. He's coming to. Hold on. Hold on. I just explained my reticence to be on camera, and then I suggested that I might feel guilty about it, and then I acknowledged that no, I don't feel guilty at all. All right. So. All righty then. And I'm not a moderator on your channel, so I can't correct anybody. Uh -huh. I'm gonna. Uh huh. Uh huh. I got shot. Mom blocked out. No, I gotta get her as, as, as a moderator. I gotta gotta get her as a moderator. I've never we've never done this, so I don't know what a moderator even means. But I guess I gotta make her a moderator so she can uh, correct stuff. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. How y'all doing today? Am I talking too much? Am I not talking enough? While I'm talking, I'm gonna go ahead and tweak on this crank one more time, even though I'm drinking a beer. Not a problem. Um, did I tell you I could weld on the water? Don't believe that. Right, hello, mom, yes. All righty then. Mm -hmm. Remove our 
the machine out of the way. That's why I don't have to go to the gym. All right, can you see the crank? You're probably going, well, I wish I could have seen the crank. Well, you might be able to see the crank. Oh, it's beer 30, and I'm at work. I'm sorry, I'm at work too. Uh, um, but I'm not really at work. We're already, as you know, we, we, we close at three. So, uh, um, this ain't, this ain't nothing. You should have a 24 hour shop cam, maybe able to. And I thought, just leave the camera running and you just see the shop, a, a shop and most people aren't going to let you be live or do anything because, you know, anybody who says they don't make mistakes. They're a liar. Um, hey, Kino bonus. I'm down to go to Vegas, but I don't want to go. I'm not going to play Kino with you. Actually, I don't know how to play Kino, but I would bet that's probably the, what, what you do. Um, I don't know what you do, but you answer the uh, AC questions pretty good too. So um, I can drink. I can't drink till tomorrow. All right. Well, I don't know what to do about that. All right. All right, then. I can drink today. I just, this is my first beer, so I'm not. You're going, God, he's all, all over the place. No, I'm always all over the place. Well, thank you, Calvin. What's the rest of what he said? What? He can't drink till tomorrow, but then after that, it's Barbacoa and Big Red. Oh, Barbacoa and Big Red. Is he for San Antonio? He's the one that has beer. Oh, has, I, I didn't see who was with Jesus. I know who Jesus is. I didn't know who, who, who was the one that said it. He I didn't. He, he's don't. a firefighter, so he can't drink while he's on duty. Well, thank you, Jesus. Because this is still going on. See, that's how that's how much beer I actually drink. And where does he get his barbacoa? Where do you get your barbacoa from? Because that's, that's, that's an important question around here. Although we make our own. We're going to have to invite Jesus over when, when Terry comes down. Yeah, and um, Jesus is like family now. You buy me a beer in your family. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but this is still the same beer that Jesus the, dropped by. Jesus uh, graciously stopped by and gifted us a uh, Faye with with some, some of her foo-foo drinks, and then me with some Miller Lite. And they were actually uh, uh, Cowboys, um, and look, Collector Series, I'm not lying, I'm, I would never lie to y'all. Anyway, but uh, uh, this is, I still have some, so I still have plenty of beer. Um, everybody thinks because it's beer 30 or whatever, whatever. man, that guy drinks like a, I was about to say like a Russian racehorse, but in Russia, the beer is considered a, a soda. Uh, Oh, in Germany, uh, um, Maurice, I love the German stories. I love hearing because that's his culture. That's where he comes from. Like I said, he's, he's Hernandez. So I, I make it a point. I joke with him. I said, I'm going to teach you Spanish, and you're going to teach me German. Unks, unks, nox. I don't know. Uh, uh, so we have this this thing going. And I love the, the, the culture stuff. And, yeah, there at, at a Boy Scout camp, they drink beer. Uh, uh, um, that's just the way it is. Peace in assembly degrees. Somebody's leaving. I'm sorry, I'm making you go away. No. Anyway, this is how we're supposed to even do that. Let's spin this dude. Who wants to see that now? Anybody? 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 There, there Calabra Meat Market. There is a, a Calabra Meat Market, huh? But which one? There's a lot of them. I don't know if Terry said that or Jesus said that. Um, I, I wonder if Hi he, there. Has he ever gotten barbacoa from Adelita? Adelita has good barbacoa también. Um... But Scud 007 ha wants to know how much horsepower you've gotten out of a streetable flathead. Because I, I wouldn't say that the one we, the blown, stroked, and fuel injected flathead is, you know, the typical build. It's not a typical build. Most people, we were talking about that earlier. You know, everybody thinks, you know, you're going to get a 200 horsepower flathead. If you want horsepower, you're not building a flathead. If you want nostalgia, if you want to have one of the smoothest running motors, um, if it's a, if you don't ever even heard of Flathead, you don't know why people would spend three times as much as building a, a small block. But if you're building horsepower, you're not building a Flathead. Uh, that's not the, you, if your intention is horsepower, you wouldn't pick uh, uh, that engine. It, it you, would, you wouldn't do it. But if you want it to be cool, you pick that engine up. So anyway, you spend a lot of money in a, in a flathead, and you know, 190 horses, you know, is is great. Uh, it's really great. I mean, they, they came out with you know 60 horses, uh, uh, 80, 95 horses. I mean, you know, so we got 150 horses. We're doing great. 190 horses. Um, there's not the problem that that I can't push. We built the blown injected. Uh, we built one that that uh, was going for Bonneville uh, land speed record. Um, 
you can do, you can throw money. If you can put a man on the moon, you can throw a lot of money on a flathead and make all kinds of different things. The two center exhaust ports come together and that's gonna be your your uh, li li limitation. What we've actually found that you can over cam a flathead and drop power down. A small cam on a flathead actually works better than a big cam on a flathead. Um, but we can make, uh, um, you know, 190 horses and, and and last all day long and, and make all the power in the world and be a great running motor. We can make more than that, but it, it, I don't even want to, those kind of numbers aren't realistic numbers because I've had customers just throw so much money to make those numbers and we, we can make them. We can do whatever you want, uh, but we're not talking of the same flathead components. Um, one of the problems with the flathead is you're watching the crankshaft is that it only has three mains the front, back, and a center main. While all other engines have a main between the rod journal, there's generally there's two rod journals on a crank, and there's a main on each side. So the crankshaft is real stable. A flathead Ford has a main in the back, and a main in the front, one in the center. So the two center four rods, the crank, and we can stiffen up the crank all we want. We put aftermarket cranks. Uh, uh, this is an aftermarket scat crank. We can put aftermarket cranks. Awesome. The block still only has three mains. We can go in and stiffen up more parts. So what I'm getting at is that sometimes, you know, it gets foolish to to uh, over uh, build on certain things, you know. But that being said, you know, 100 horsepower uh, a flathead is awesome. 150 horsepower flathead is awesome. 190 horsepower flat awesome. Reliable, lasts all day long. Um, but you don't build a flathead if you, um, you know, if you have a lack of money. Uh, that's not the way you wouldn't be doing that. Thanks for the answer. All right, let's spin this sucker up. All righty. What do we have in the front? And I marked it. It's right here. And I had said before, so a lot of people ask about the drill bits. I said Boss Hog. They're... Uh, now I've even forgot the name again. They're um, drill bosses or something. Ass shot mom. She's got the thing. I'm going to try to find. Um, you can only get them on eBay. They don't even have a phone number. I was going to call them and see if we can't get a show special for everybody who wants the drill bits. Um, so we sent an email. Um, I had marked. Does anybody wonder where I'm drilling the holes? Is that even a question to anybody? Does anybody... Even wonder, how does he know where to drill the holes? Anybody? Anybody? Nope. I'll keep going in that case. Well, we'll talk about how I chose the place to put the hole and how deep. Yes, Ted. All I need is one. All I need is one. Um, okay. You remember, because it wasn't that long ago, when that light was strobing, every time there's a, a sensor on both sides, and every time there's a vibration, that sensor turns on a strobe light. So every time it goes tunk, 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 because it's out of balance, strobe light, strobe light. Why did I mark the back of the crank? Strobe light. Now we have a, this is analog. All the new stuff now is all di digital. It stops where it wants you to drill. It it's all does it for you. You have an operator who don't know anything about balancing, but the machine does everything for you. Um, this is analog. It'll bite you in the freaking ass if you don't, you don't know what you're doing. All right, so the light was strobing. Okay, if it's strobing on 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, I remove metal. If it's strobing at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I add metal. Pretty cool, huh? So looking at the back, that's why I was going the clock. That's why I was going 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, where that line is strobing tells you, are we removing metal or are we adding metal? Okay, so one example. Remember, it was strobing over here. Uh, it was strobing at nine o'clock, right? So it wants to remove metal at nine o'clock. Okay, can y'all see this far back? If I set the strobe here at nine o'clock, how in the world uh, oh, uh, at 9 o'clock on, on, on this particular side, they want me to add metal, okay? How, at 9 o'clock is add metal. You, did anybody catch that? 
at one, two, three, four on this side is remove metal. At nine o'clock is add metal uh, or add at three o'clock. Uh, three o'clock is, is remove. The three o'clock is remove, nine o'clock is add. But if I have, we do some drawings now. Okay, center line. How's that? Oh no, that's the that's what it means center line. Okay, if I have a weight over here, and it says to add weight right there, I can't add weight to air. I just can't. What if we used our brain and said, "Golly, Lord Jesus, I can't add weight there." What if I took some weight off of there? What if I removed weight from here? It wants me to add weight there. The machine is telling me, add weight there, Danny. It keeps telling me, Danny, Danny, add weight there. I can remove weight, there we go, over here. So you remove it at nine o'clock. That's how, so, so that's why, look, here I go again. My training falls off my thing and, and then I step on it and smash it. All right. So, it's a lot of common sense. That's why I encourage y'all to get into the machine world business. But unless you first get into a different mentality of thinking, um, you'll just be so frustrated. And I hate machines that... I asked my uncle one time. I go all these stories, right? You want to you hear an uncle's story? My uncle who, who taught me everything. He was known as chief in San Antonio. Uh, um, taught a lot of machine shops, a lot of everybody. Yes, we're going to hear a story. So... I'm going to sit down and tell a little, little uncle story. So I'd ask my uncle. I'm sitting down. I'll say, you're not as high as up, or maybe I should stand or something. So I, it's, you know, uh, a shop mom would tell me, we told the story. At seven years old, I was doing valve jobs. So you got to go back to earlier than that, I was cleaning and buffing valves. So um, as a little kid, I was in a milk cart, and I'm buffing valves, buffing valves, and I'm just trying to assist my uncle in uh, to to get the load off of the stress that I can see he's under because he's got so much work. But in the shop, we always made it fun. We always t teamed up on things, and it was kind of like teamwork, and it was always a fun environment. My uncle's always really... That's where I got my my humor from. Uh, my uncle's always real humorous. Uh, didn't like any bull crap on, on in the shop. Uh, we didn't have any place for any payasos. Uh, payasos is a Spanish word for a clown. There was no place for clowning around in the shop, anything. But wh whistle while you work. Yeah, that was the thing. We always were were having different competitions and how fast can you put a sleeve in? How fast can you do that? Anyway, that being said, I'm going, Chief, you know, Chief, you know, it's a Chief. Eliseo Garza is my uncle's name. So it's a Chief. Why? You know, I want to I, I want to cut the seats. I want to cut the vows. I want to cut the vows. Here I am, a little kid, you know, and, and he says, and now I think he was uh, Japanese. Uh, it's like, you know, young, you know, young Luke, whoa, you know, master this. And then we'll get into training you something else. Have you mastered this? So I'm buffing valves. Okay, now I'm, I'm in, the, in the cutting valves still. Still a little kid on a box cutting valves. Man, I want to just cut a seat. Why can't I cut a seat? Why can't I cut a seat? And he said, Chief, master this, and then we'll go to something else. But master this. Don't just learn it. Master it. As a little kid, you're kind of like, yeah, I did. No, no master this, and then we'll go to something else. So, the chief comes in, okay. And anytime you're ready, ask. Okay, so, baby steps. Yes, we'll wax on, wax off. So, he says, um, uh, 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 Chevy 350, what's the angle on the valve? 45 degrees. 4302, you know, 45 degrees, you know. Uh, Ford FE 360, 45 degrees. Wah, wah, wah. No, not 45 degrees. It's 30 degrees. And then he would take the time to pull out a 4, 390, and maybe an hour. He's like me. You could, if you ask a question, I will educate you till I'm blue in the face. And he took the time to go over a 4, 390 and the 30 degree angle. And you, young Luke, you know, he didn't know young Luke, but uh, um, um, master this. Tell me every angle on every valve on your own. Don't come in here and go, 
Hey, chief, I was trying to cut this valve because if you cut it at a different angle, you'll see it'll, it'll cut different. An idiot, and I shouldn't say that, will cut a valve and change the angle on you and just keep cutting it till it sees the shiny. A smart guy will know once you start cutting the valve and we're at a 45, yes, in the middle where the seat rides, it's not going to clear there, but it's going to clear on both sides and you're going to cut the valve until it clears. The spot that it was hitting, it's indented. So, but if you start cutting and you're only cutting on one side of the valve, either here, your angles aren't right. Well, it, the dumb butt that doesn't know anything about angles that you just train how to cut a valve is going to cut it till it's clear. And then he doesn't ruin a set of valves because he cut them out of 45. Well, no, darn it. A 394 is 30 degree. So, young Luke. I wouldn't, like I said, he didn't young Luke. So I'd, Okay, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, now I'm doing everything to learn every freaking angle on everything in. You know, sure enough, the next time, Chief, okay, I'm ready for you, Chief, I'm ready for you. Yeah, let's do it. And let's throw in an Oldsmobile on me. All right, how about an Oldsmobile? What is an Oldsmobile high? So, by the time I was a little kid, I mastered every angle, and I could cut a valve like a, like a master, but I was just like, oh, I want to I cut seats, you know. How are you going to cut seats? You don't know what the angle's in on a valve. How are we going to start talking about angles on a seat if you don't know all the angles on a valve? A seat has three angles. A valve has one angle. You can't master one. So you know how you'd feel like a, whoa, whoa, whoa. But he empowered you to, oh, it was always a new, oh, man, and I want to learn that on everything else. That being said, I don't know where even where I was going with this, but master everything that you do. Oh, I know where I was going with it. Finally, and look. I didn't even finish one beer yet, so it's not like I'm doing that. But then um, I'd say, Chief, this is not, now I'm in high school. I, I was actually, uh, this is before, before high school, because by high school, I was a shop foreman. So a little bit before, before high school, and I would ride a 100 Suzuki, bought myself from working, and I didn't have a license. I was in junior high, going all the way from, if you know Callahan Road, all the way to Zarzamora. These days, you wouldn't let anybody even drive that, that, that kind of stuff. But back in the day, you know, it was, anyway. That being said, and then right after school, I throw my books and everything in, in the in the garage because that's where my motorcycle was, and I'd get my bike and I'd haul ass over there just to work two or three hours at the end of the day. Because actually, at my mom's shop, we we would work till eight or nine at night. Uh, I didn't do a very good school, but I was a hell of a machine. Anyway, that being said, master, what 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 you learn? I said, chief, you hire people, and in a day they're doing valve seats guides. In a week, the first week. And here I am years with you. I've been here years with you. And I'm finally now cutting a seat. This guy's been here a week and you got him doing, guy, you got him doing it. Chief would say, Danny, I have all my life with you. Master what you have. I have one week on Friday, we got to pay that guy. So I don't care if he learns every freaking angle. I got to pay him on Friday. So what are we going to do? I'm going to tell him, everyone, cut those seats at 45. I don't care if he even knows what 45 means. I got to pay him on Friday. I have all my life with you. Master this and we'll master every task. The employee we just hired today, yes, on Friday, he's doing a VOD job. Guess what? He's going to screw up every other VOD job in the world because I want to show him a Chevy 350. I can't. He, I can't yes. But guess what? They only work a year here. So I can't take the time to teach them everything. There you go. Is that a good story or not? I don't know if it was a good story. So master what you got uh, before you move on to something else. Uh, if you go into a shop, that's what's going to happen. They're going to put you to work and they have to start tearing down. You're going to have to start doing stuff. I don't have time to teach you. I got to teach you enough that you don't screw up my, my work for my customers. But I'm not going to teach you how metal expands because you might only be here a year. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to teach you to how you can help me get this engine out fast enough and I can pay you on Friday and make money paying you and helping out. But do I, and my uncle, I shouldn't say I, it's like that. Do I care that you learn everything? My uncle did care. So, but uh, um, that's the point, man, is it's tough to go to a job, to a place, unless you say, look, I'll sweep the floors and I'll do it for free and everything else. But you might have a shop that's just crappy and going to take advantage of you. So I think you're going to have to just DIY it, Bubba. You're going to have DIY it. I'm here for you. I mean, where there's plenty of YouTube is a great uh, place for, it's also a great place to get a bunch of bad advice, um, but it's a different world now. Um, you can see enough people doing things right, they know how to do it right. Um, I, you know, 
with COVID even worse now, but um, I had thought about, we just close this place down and just go to a, an online school. I'll just, you know, have class every day. We just have class every single day. I'd be in heaven. Um, I'm like my uncle. My uncle loved, uh, oh, I want to go some more uncle stories. This is Chief. This is Chief stories. We're going to call it Chief Friday. Um, I don't know. Maybe you don't want to hear more Chief stories. Maybe I take it back into balance. I ate two of my bosses because they gave me the orders to do something, but they didn't tell me why, just how. And I hate that. I I, I, I like to empower people. Uh, um, I hate telling Anybody what to do, I like in the morning to lay out what what their goal is for today to get done. And I like to have teamwork and everybody uh, get in in a, in a frame of mind of, oh, cool. And as opposed to being, I don't like to be told what to do. I don't know how y'all are. I do not like to be told what to do. Tell me what needs to be done. Don't tell me what to do. It's a little bit different. In business, you got to tell people what to do. But I grew up that way from, from my uncle. And like I said, I would go in and just see the stress that I'd want to just knock his stuff out because to help him. What are you stressing out? As a kid, I was a master at drilling bolts. I drilled so many bolts and helicals and... All right. What it, I, I, shop I, mom ready to go? I, I tell you what to do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And you'd gladly She's do She's my it. master. And, I'm and, not going to go that I'm her slave. And, and, no, but you'd yeah. gladly go there. No, Brian had a question. Yes, Brian. He wanted to know how differently would an engine act that's built here, talking about metal expansion, versus how it would act if it got to its home, say, in Maine. <laughs> excellent question. Oh, excellent question. We most definitely, I just spent um, cl class on the counter, what, an hour, two hours with one of our customers. Did I tell you, but I gave the... Yes, I, I you did. told him. You I told know, him. I'm just, I'm and the, and the guy watching. that was with him, we built his. We built an engine for him. We built a 5.0 for him we built a, a couple of years ago. His name yes. is Mark. I don't know if you remembered him. He, he remembers everybody. Yes, I, I do remember. I remember his face, not, not a name, but yes. Um, okay, we're going to wrap it up in about 10 minutes. So. 10 minutes. So get your drink on in 10 minutes. I want to still spin that up or drill it at least, but um, you should have live stream running an engine. Um, yes, Bob, we will. We will. I want to do the blower motor. Just fire it up. Here's the deal. One of the things that I gave a class on the counter today, um, um, I, I brought out the federal mogul, the federal mogul and the, the Michigan bearing catalog. And I showed how production specs are just all over the place. And on an instance on, um, on a rod bearing, um, federal mogul and Michigan bearing say that five tenths, the low tolerance to two six was the big tolerance. That's the tolerance that if it's within that window, done. Take, take me to court. I, I hit those numbers. Production numbers. Did you hear what I did? Five tenths? There's nothing on God's green earth that's going to run in five tenths all clearance. I don't care if you're in Canada. I don't care if you're in, maybe in, 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 in Michigan, in Detroit, in the coldest winter, in a lab with not a piece of lint in the world. Maybe, maybe it ran that five tenths. There's no freaking way in the God's green earth it's going to run at five tenths. Do you know what five tenths of, of a thousand is? I can pull my hair off right now and get a mic. I'm a little older now, so it may be more in the. Dude, when I was younger, my hair was four thousand thick. That's a piece of hair. Uh, depending on on y'all, um, this is be th thicker than this hair nowadays. But don't get me going. I'm oh, I'm losing my hair. Anyway, anyway, that's. So one thousandths, take that one thousandths, which a hair is four thousandths, take one thousandths, one fourth of a hair, and divide it into ten. That's tenths. That's a tenth of a thousandths. I didn't go to school, didn't go to math, didn't go to all that, but I know that. I know if they had, had a micrometer in class, I'd be a physics major, damn it. Uh, um, it's weird that I could do decimals and read a micrometer and the decimal points and everything else, but yet I wouldn't go to school. It's, it was different, but when you put a crank in front of me, I'll tell you, and I hit the number every time. I can read a mic. I can read a mic as a kid. As a little kid, I can read a mic. But yet in school, it was no one put the two together. Am I going all over the place on this? All right. Um, so, yes, that would be the difference. Here, I use what I call every engine I built in this building since I've been here. I have never put it at the minimum spec. I do a 510 South Texas clearance, as I call it. And I tell everybody before that, you tell me, you want me to hit the number the box says on it? And every box, um, look at that, it gives you the, the, the specs on it. And they always give you what the, the minimum clearance, what the maximum clearance is. Um, they're all gonna give you that. Um, 
all good quality stuff. All good. This is the ones that are going for the flathead I'm doing right now. So they're going to give you the, I can't even see the camera there that well, but it's going to give you the piston size and it's going to give you the bore size. And you take track the bore size. Their bore size is 3.312, which is 5 sixteenths. And then we have 3.308. 308 from 312, that's our clearance. Um, so um, every manufacturer is going to give you what the clearance that that they want. A more precision piston manufacturer is gonna give you a number, a, I can pull all kinds of pistons, um, we'll give you more of a, a window. No, in here, I tell everybody, you tell me, do it your way or I can do it my way, but I'm gonna tell you right now, my, my way is five tenths, five tenths bigger. I know it works in the Texas Hill Country. That works in the Texas Hill Country every single time. We've never galled a piston, never. Not just last week, not just eight years, Never gall the piston. That's not even part of me on the, on the back. When you are when you do stuff because you know, it's nothing to be, I don't want to say product issue. There, it's, we're, um, it's not a guess. It's not like, whew, got lucky on that. Luck is not a business model. That's another good one. Is that, should that be a good t-shirt? Do I get a shirt that luck is not a business model? What my uncle used to always say, you're going to get, uh, um, uh, I'm just going to call it Chief's Hour. Maybe we'll do uh, uh, a Friday Chief's Hour, one hour of Chief's sayings. Um, my uncle used to always say, see out that window over there? You see that tree? The guy that's underneath that, that, that tree doing the machine work, he might get away with that. Might get away with it. Might not. And sometimes we've seen stuff that, like, I don't know how he got away with it. Guess what? That shade tree mechanic, he's a shade tree mechanic. He got away with it. He might get away with it. You can't, you can't build a business model. You can't. He used to tell my mom, uh, um, this is my uncle, so my, so my mom's br brother. He used to tell my mom, when we collect that money, you don't have to do like other businesses. You don't have to put 20% away in another account for comebacks. Take that money and pay bills with it. You don't have to put any aside. We're small business. We don't have no bank account. We don't have no no cushion. I don't know. Uh, small business, this is the way it works. I'm not complaining. I don't do anything else. But in small business, there isn't a, a bank account there that's like, oh, I got to, uh, you know, oh, cool. I can just grab money from that account. Grab money from what account? You know, money gets you. We gotta, we're not going in there. We're going to do a business video if you want to do a business. But he used to always say, Chief used to always say to, 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 to my mom, he say, Take that money, put it in the bank, and pay your bills. We don't need to put any money aside. We don't do anything that's a chance. The guy with the tree on over there, he can do it. It's okay. It's straight to mechanic. There's shops out there like that. Nothing that we do, we chance anything. We do a lot of stuff that people won't even do. And I can go on. Um, I would rather use a used oil pump then do something else. If a customer tells me, man, I got a budget here, and I'm like, oh, but everybody puts in the oil pump. Yeah, sure, I, and I would too. That's not your problem. You didn't have an oiling problem. You had an overheating problem, sir. I take the pump apart and reveal your pump. I can save you some money. Why don't you take it apart? Let me show you right now because I give class on the counter, and they're going, even my mom would say at my mom's shop, they're a production shop. You spend a half an hour to teach a guy how to rebuild his oil pump. Pull one from the shelf and make five bucks and selling one. He had a, a, a budget, and I would rather he use the money for head gaskets or milling the heads than replacing an oil pump because everybody in the God's green earth says, you don't build a motor without putting in the oil pump. Have we ever lost an engine? And I say ever, and I encourage everybody to go look me up, go look everything else, but get all, I'm on the side of there. Find an engine that we've lost. Find a spun rod bearing. Not just in eight years that we've been in this building. I've been doing this as a kid. Go, I encourage you. Go look around. Type in my name. Type in everything else. Find a engine that smokes. An engine. An engine. I may not know the English language. I'm sorry. But find an engine that smokes. Find an engine that has a rod knock. I Do I keep going? I don't need to no, go, go no, ahead. No, you need to answer Ted Lane's question. Yes, Ted, Ted Lane. Ted, Ted's been asking keep me going. He's well, been, Ted, well, go ahead. You, we're going to wrap this we're up. We're going to wrap this soon, up. So let's answer Ted Lane's question. Okay, here you go, Ted. If you're doing 4,000's clearance, are you going to high side it, low side it? And 4,000, then I, I know already you're talking about a piston and a cylinder wall. To people that are out there know, Ted obviously knows, you're not talking about a rod bearing, you're not talking about a main bearing. Unless you're talking about d diesel and a big journal on a big uh, Cummings or something, but let's not go there. Um, I, I hear 4,000s, 
So I know you're talking about 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 cylinder to piston bore. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Now I also know you're talking about a forged piston. I know you're not talking about a cast piston because the cast piston or hypertech piston either wouldn't have that clearance. So you are talking about a forged piston and you are talking forged. Are you from the South Texas Hill Country area? I would do four and a half. Yes. My my five tenths Texas clearance. Most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. If you're up in Michigan, Canada, where it really gets colder, a lot colder. It's a different environment up there. Um, I'm not from up there, so I don't know if I would fudge that 4,000s. That might work there. But no, if I was doing it here, it'd be 4 and 5 tenths. Anything else? I'm gonna drill. So anyway, that's how I feel about, about uh, that's how I know I'm drilling the hole. That, that's where, where it was strobing, that told me where it wanted. It was strobing, and it said, remove... There's no counterweight there. Uh, or actually, it said add. There's no counterweight there. So I'm going to the opposite side to, to remove. So I actually have um, I have the strobe line. I can put it exactly where it was. And then I look 180 degrees away. That's why I have that thing over there. So I've already marked where it wants. So these holes may be looking like they're random. They're really not random. It's The machine was telling me where. And then I'm going to sit there and and drill where it told me. I'd rather um, ease up on it. One of my favorite lines, um, why be in a hurry to do it again? Why be in a hurry to buy more pistons? Why be in a hurry to have a crank where I'm gonna have to go in there and weld where I drilled too much? Um, I'd rather ease up on it, go back and forth. You saw me last Friday. This is the same crank that was in there last Friday. I'd come in during the week, boom, boom, hit a little bit, hit a little bit. I get it better and better and better. I'm gonna come in tomorrow. Tomorrow's my day off. Um, I do videos and, and then we shoot anyway. We don't go there. So. Any hoot, I've enjoyed this. Terry, Pachanga Terry, we'll keep this going up just for me and Terry, and y'all can just um, um, enjoy the room with us. Um, we're not replacing happy hour. That's not what this is. It's just, um, I wonder what, what, what Terry was doing. I didn't want Terry to drink alone. So um, we might do this next Friday. Uh, we may be in the same crank. No, we won't. Shop Mom will not let that happen. Um, thank you, David. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Robert. Um, Peace and assembly grease, everybody. What does uh, Robert say with Bob? He has a uh, peace and assembly grease. So P A A. Well, there's the uh, Terry guy there too. All right, Terry, RC. Uh, we can't wait to see y'all again. Y'all stay safe. Let us know if you need more masks. Um, anybody else? Everybody stay stay safe. Uh, um, I'm on to my four scotch. Well, there. So I'm probably looking really good right about now. Uh, okay, there. This has been fun. Uh, way to thank y'all. Um, I see some new people in the room. Peace and assembly grease, David. Um, hey, ain't alone. Vodka for all. There, there we go. Um, Edgar, I don't know if I've seen you in the room. Uh, yeah, I have a while. I, I remember the icon, so maybe, maybe not. I've had a lot of drink. One beer. Mm -hmm. uh, peace and assembly grease, everybody. Thanks for coming in. I will, you know, um, do this next Friday. Um, we're gonna keep doing this for Ted until I think three weeks before Faye comes back. It's gonna be about about three weeks, um, and then hopefully we'll we'll see how much uh, quarantining we need to do. Even that's becoming an issue just in quarantining, right? No, no, no. No, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Faye, Faye is not up to par yet. She feels about ninety percent. Okay, so you got so the that's update. Why she's not, that's why she's not. Okay, even so today. so you can so you everybody hear that? No. Faye is visiting with her friend next week, so she will that? not be here next week. There will be no book club next week. Um, she does plan on being back here for book club on Wednesday the 25th before Thanksgiving. And uh, kind of up in the air about the plans for the Motor Trend Holiday Special, which is going to drop on... Friday the 27th. She's kind of toying with the idea of maybe all of us getting together and watching it together. So my thought for that is we should kind of do it like MST3K style from the back. That, that, would, would, be, that would be the only camera appearance that I make. Oh, there you go. From the back. And we can watch it in the in yes. so, so let's see. So we're going to yes. play this anyway. by ear. Um, we totally thank you everybody for just, you know, not getting frustrated if, you know. And thanks for being concerned about Faye. But she thanks is, for being concerned she about is Faye. feeling better, just not really up to par yet. She needs to, we, need to, we all need to be safe. We yeah. all need to be safe. She's starting uh, um, some new exciting stuff. So she's got to be real safe. Don't 
you know, so... And, and we'll talk about that another time. We will talk about Peace another time. And Peace and assembly grief. Peace and assembly grief. Farmer Girls with, with, with Chickens. I've been watching your chickens. Awesome job. Uh, Torsi. Uh, Kino Bonus. Awesome. Uh, Patrick. Anybody that's new, hit the like and subscribe button. Leave me a comment. You know, I'm bad at doing all this kind of stuff. We're out of here. I'm going to go home. We're going to wash up and take the rest of the evening off. Tomorrow, I'll be doing on video work and editing. I'm going to come in and shoot some more for Tuesday's video. Tuesday's video is finally the last part of cutting a ring. And you know how I just can't teach you something without you actually getting the essence of the full thing. By the time you get to the finished part of cutting the ring, you'll be like my uncle says, master this. Because, boy, I got something exciting to for you all to see on ring cutting that I couldn't do until you learned to file and you learned to ring cutter. But I couldn't go there yet. So, peace and assembly degrees. No hostages. All right. Um, I love this. This is great. All right. Uh, Terry, we'll see you next Friday. Um, everybody else, hang out. Watch my... If you uh, subscribe, you'll get a, 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 a notification. I don't even know who I'm looking at anymore half the time. All right. Peace and assembly degrees to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being concerned for Faye. Uh, she's doing good. I could shop mom says she's doing better. All right. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, everybody. And look, I've finished one beer. All right. I'm saying bye. Maybe. Do I know?